Hello and welcome to Handmade Originals. This is the YouTube channel where I try out a whole range of creative and I hope interesting projects in the hope of encouraging you and even inspiring you to have a go yourself. Now, since we've had two years of lockdown globally, um, I don't know about you, but we have a glut of weddings to go to this summer. Um, and two of the young ladies getting married this summer are very close to me and I have volunteered to make them a garter each. So this video, so this video is how to make a wedding garter. Hello, stop. Um, I've just popped back from the future. I am appearing later on in this video where I'm going to make a second garter. Just to let you know, I actually make two, two garters. <laughs> this is too confusing. Time travel. Um, I make two garters in this video. The first one, I consider every possible uh, permutation of how you could do it. Uh, and I do actually end up making a really lovely garter. The second one, I assume that you've watched the first one, so I do it quite quickly. So if you don't have a lot of time or you sort of know what you're doing, but you just want to have some, and you just want to have a quick refresher, um, go to the second video later on where I'm wearing this outfit and, uh, and you'll see the second one much more quickly. Um, gotta go, back to the future. Bye. So the first thing you have to do is measure the leg, the leg which is going to wear the guard. And it doesn't matter whether you wear it on the right leg or the left leg. Anyway, so what does matter though is which part of the leg you measure. So here is what I hope is a handy drawing. I'm not going to get my thigh out. Well, I hope this diagram is useful. So basically, if you see where this little line is here, that's where you want to measure. So it's about three inches, four inches above the knee, depending on how long your legs are. Um, so that's what about 10, 15 centimeters above the knee if you're going metric. And I don't know if you can see here the sort of the outline oh, that I've drawn here. This is, so this would be a fishtail kind of dress and this is more of a ball gown. So if you've got a bride who has a tightly fitted dress and obviously she has to wear it a little bit lower so it doesn't interfere with the profile of the dress otherwise she's going to walk down the aisle looking like she's got a very strange lump on her leg. Um, equally you don't want it to be where the two legs meet which is for most people about here I guess because then if it could just sort of chafe against the other leg and also not good um, on your wedding day. So if you're wearing a ball gown, if your bride is wearing a ball gown, you could wear one as well if you like, <laughs> if your bride is wearing a ball gown you can kind of w measure wherever you like to um, wear it but word of caution if your legs um, kind of come down like that, so they're sort of much wider here and go down on a slope like that, the garter is more likely to slip. So the straighter part of your leg is kind of the bit I highlighted earlier, which is just above the knee. Um, so the next thing I would mention when you're designing your garter is think about scale. So what I mean is if you've got someone who is really tall or has bigger proportions than I guess your average, whatever the average may be, no judgment or body shaming here. Um, give them something which complements their size, whatever it is, um, and not something that just looks ridiculous on their legs. So if you've got someone who's got broad thighs, don't give them something teeny tiny, which is small, which will make them look even broader. Give them something in proportion. And equally, if you've got someone who is very, very slim, don't give them something which is huge and kind of lavish and big proportions, because that, again, will emphasise the thinness of them, and which is, again, you know, you want something that's just going to be in proportion, whatever their size is. Right, so we've worked out where to measure. Um, so, the next thing, so the next thing you have to do is cut your elastic. Right, having taken your measurement of your <laughs> of your leg <laughs> to be dressed, um, the next thing to do is to cut your elastic. But before you cut any elastic at all, you need to sort out which elastic you're going to use. Now I have, this is some elastic which I've had probably for years, which is sitting in my sewing things. And this is some elastic I've just bought. And I just wanted to show to you that not all elastics are equal. So if I hold this here and I say measure, six inches and then I stretch it that stretches to ooh, 13 and three quarter inches whereas my new elastic if I hold that to six inches 
and I pull that. That only goes to 12 inches, so this is the better, the stronger elastic. It also feels like it's got more resilience in it, whereas this is a bit feeble. So the bottom line is, there's a joke coming here, if you don't trust it to hold up your knickers, don't trust it to hold up a garter. So this elastic, which is ancient and has been sitting in my sewing, I'm going to discard. I'm going to use this newer, stronger, all bells ringing elastic, which will hopefully hold the garter up throughout the entire ceremony and reception thereafter. Now, so both of my ladies have legs which measure 19 inches. So I don't think I'm giving anything away there, which is private, hopefully not. They'll tell me after. So right now I'm going to cut the elastic, but before I cut it, I'm not going to cut it to 19 inches because then the meeting edge to edge, it will just go around with no stretch at all. So you want it to stretch. Uh, the received wisdom appears to be two and a half to three inches shorter. So if I cut it at three inches shorter, it would stretch to 19. And that's quite a nice stretch, but I want to allow a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to cut it to 16 and a half and then I will lose that extra half an inch with the seam allowance. There you are, it's done now. Right, when you're cutting the lace, you want it to be one and a half times the girth of the leg measurement. So I'm, and this is just to make it kind of frilly when it's all pulled up with the elastic. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit either way, and obviously the more you add to it, the frillier it's going to be. Do bear in mind if you've got a very tight fitting dress you don't want it too frilly because otherwise it will show underneath and that's not a good look on a on a bride gown bridal gown right so my two girls measure 19 inches so let's call it 20 because that's easier to calculate one and a half times 20 is 30 inches so i'm going to measure my lace at 30 inches right so this is my first piece of lace and what I actually want to do is put two layers of lace so I'm going to offset if you can see the little V at the bottom I want to offset it so I'm going to cut it there so it's slightly longer here to allow me to do that you mustn't stretch your lace otherwise you'll ruin everything <laughs> right so that takes me to to this point here Again, don't worry too, that takes me to that point. So I can, if you can see, I've cut it so that I can offset the lace, that the top joins up here with the valley there and equally that will join up there. You don't need to worry too much about trimming it at the moment because you can do that once you've made it. Now, this is the white satin ribbon, which I'm choosing to be the central part of the garter. So I'm going to just, this is a bit of a tatty end, so I'm just going to neaten that. And I'm going to measure 30 inches of this to here. So that these two, if I can just show you how it's going to work, will be like that underneath that ribbon, which I think will look very pretty. Um, and then I've got this extra little bit of lace left over here, which is not long enough to go along the top here. So I'm going to add a slightly different lace, but I think complementary nonetheless, along the top. But I'm not going to show all of it. I just think it looks a bit more balanced if I have a tiny bit showing like that. And then I'm going to put a little decoration in the middle here. But this is the this is the fun part where you literally just play about with all the different laces and ribbons and things that you've got to embellish. Um, so that's the so have a look at it, play around, play around and choose what suits you. And also, you know, if your bride is a particular type of person then pick something that suits her character. So if your bride is a very much a sort of city girl um, and likes a bit of glitz and glamour, you could use something like this. If your bride is more of a fresh air and country type, 
little things like this or like this if she's a bit of a vamp <laughs> something like this right what I'm going to do now is attach these two pieces of lace together and then I'm going to sew them onto the edge of the ribbon and I'm going to put this on the other edge of the ribbon as well now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the elastic a lot of people online make a channel by having two two pieces of ribbon which they attach and then they thread the elastic through which does work but as someone who and I am embarrassed to tell you made somebody once um, a garter which did slide down I think that the safer way to make a garter stay put on your leg is to just put elastic on the back because the elastic stretches and it will sort of pinch either the hairs or your skin and it stays put. Plus, this is not slippery, so don't get that sort of polyester elastic. This is sort of a cotton elastic. It's not slippery, so it will create some sort of friction and will stay put. Whereas, if you have something which is like a satin, double satin ribbon on both sides, unless that's pretty tight on your leg, it's a possibility it can slide down. And I don't think any bride walking down the aisle wants to be concerned about losing her garter halfway through the ceremony. So personally, and it is a personal choice, I'm going to choose to just back my satin ribbon with elastic and then the elastic will go next to the leg. There are other ways, if you like, of doing this. So if you want to form a channel, what you could do is put um, some cotton on the back here, cotton ribbon, or you could even put blo blobs of um, hot glue. And the reason I suggest that is because this is, this is a pair of hold-ups. If you can see, it's got sort of like rubberized strip inside and that kind of sticks to your leg and makes it stay put. Um, so if you're not sure whether you agree with me or not, I would invite you to consider and compare an elastic band on one arm and a silky satin scrunchie on the other. Which one do you have more confidence will stay put? So my vote is for the elastic, um, but this is a choice for you to make. And that's what I'm going to do in this video so you can have a look at what it looks like uh, when I've finished and decide whether or not uh, that's a route you want to take. But in actual fact, I think it looks identical. It's just on the outside. It's just on the inside. It looks different. Right. Moving on. I just want to show you what this looks like once I've put the two layers of lace attached to the bottom. Um, I'm actually going to change the lace I was thinking of putting on the top because I think this one which I've just found is actually a better match. It's got that same scalloped edge with my, which I think looks so pretty. I don't know if it's going to line up exactly but I think that's just being a bit ridiculous on my part but I think that that just looks really pretty so I'm just going to put that on the edge there which I think will just finish it off perfectly but the whole point of this is if you're making something really intimate and personal for a friend or a relative it should be a labour of love so have fun with it really enjoy it and create something totally beautiful um, which hopefully will add to their special day right I'm going to add this bit on here and then I'll come back and let you know where I am right so here we have the all three lengths of lace attached and I hope you agree it looks really really pretty um, so that's my 30 inch ribbon and lace um, composite and now I've got my this is 16 and a half inches of the stronger elastic if I put this next to the ribbon which it's going to be attached to can you see that actually it's only about half the width of the ribbon so my mantra is always bend it to your will, which is basically if something doesn't work, think of a way round it to make it work, which is sort of the essence of creativity, I guess. When you hit a bump in the road, find a way to drive round it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use two bits of ribbon, uh, sorry, two bits of elastic, which side by side will actually be virtually exactly the width of that ribbon 
lengthen which makes up the main part of the garter. So I'm just going to cut another piece of elastic the same length and then I'm going to put them side by side, not overlapping, side by side and then I'm going to run a zigzag stitch down them to make them into one piece. Here's a little lesson as we go. I've zigzagged these two and put them together but the only thing is that because of the stitching joining the two of them side by side now doesn't reach the full length of the ribbon and the lace whereas if I have a single piece which is 16 inches long it does. So I'm going to put a single piece along there. Right so if I'm going to just use the single piece of elastic I'm going to pin it at one end pin it at one end in the middle Right, I'm going to mark where the half and the quarter position is, so half is there. I'm going to do the same here. Right, so this will go at the end here. Halfway position for the lace is here. Quarter position for the lace and the three quarters position. Right, so if I connect, that is the halfway position of the lace and elastic. Quarter position for lace and the elastic and that is the three quarters position if you want to put it like that, it's going to be very accurate. Here's what I'm going to do. I've pinned the elastic onto the lace and the ribbon. You can see that I've got to pull it out as I sew it. You could either I'm going to let go so I can't really explain it. You could either zigzag it like that or you could do one straight stitch down each side of the elastic. I think I'm going to do one straight stitch down each side of the elastic but if I do that I'm going to have to try to keep my seams quite straight although frankly when that's gathered up you're not really going to have much of a visual on the stitching. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back and show you when I've done it. Right so here we have the ribbon has been attached to the single piece of elastic. Um, I've sewn it on both sides of the both edges of the elastic and I'm really pleased with how that looks now. So now all I've got to do is join the ends up. I just wanted to quickly check that my elastic hasn't stretched and that this is still going to be tight enough for my young lady. So I think I've probably got about 16 and a half. Well I'm going to use maybe 16 and three quarters. I'm going to use about um, half an inch putting this together each side. So that should be just about right actually, so that it's stretchy enough to get over her leg, um, but tight enough that it stays up. And here you can see there's the elastic, which hopefully will be um, have sufficient friction and the elasticity will keep it on the leg and not sliding down, <laughs> which is not a good look. Right, I'm just going to um, put these two together like this, finish off the ends, and then I'm going to show you how to decorate it, which is even more of a fun part. Okay, we're on the home run. Here it is, all sewn up with the edges, and I'm really pleased with it. What I'm going to do to decorate it, I'm going to put a little bow here and I'm going to use this buckle to pull it all together. So to use this buckle I have just made a loop of ribbon. I've sewed it together here and so that's the wrong side. Turn it inside out like that. I'm just going to flatten these down and then I am going to push it through this bow and the way you do this is you push it through that side 
And then you do the same thing. It's a bit fiddly, but it's not rocket science. That side, and there, look at that. A very cute, pretty little bow, which is really elegant, I think, as well. It just has that little bit of sparkle, plus it's very neat from the back as well. And that will go on here. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... Is that the same colour? I think it is. I'm just going to add a couple of little pieces down like that, just to finish it off. But I'm going to... Um, just to show you this, when you are adding your your um, little tails to the bow that you've created with the bow buckle, um, just bear in mind that not all satin ribbon is double-sided satin. Some of it has a more matte side, so a wrong side to it, as has this ribbon here. Can you see that side's shiny and that side's not? I want both shiny sides to the front, so just do a twist like this, so you've got both shiny tails to the front and then you attach it to the garter. The little bow that you've created will go over the top to hide any folds. I'm just going to do that now and I'll show you when it's finished. And here it is, the finished garter. And I think, I'm really pleased with it actually, I think it looks really, really pretty. Um, key features of this, obviously the blue bow, blue, um, one of the requirements of Getting married in the Western world, old, new, borrowed and blue. A little bit of bling, diamante. Do go easy if you're putting any diamante on your buckle, on your garter, because diamante can be quite heavy. And obviously the heavier it makes the garter, the more likely it is that the garter will slide down the leg of the bride, which is not a good look. Um, the other thing is run, just run your finger over whatever you're attaching to make sure it doesn't have any snags on it, so that when the bride is wearing it, it doesn't catch on the underskirts of her dress. Apart from that, just to make sure also the lace is not too prickly because that's not going to be nice on her leg. It'll be like wearing a hedgehog under your dress. Um, and that's it really. Just make it as personal to you, to the bride as possible. I am really pleased with this. This is for a bride who is a high powered executive. She's very sleek and chic, but she's also got a bit of a frilly girl in there somewhere as well. So I think, I'm hoping she'll be delighted with this. I'm going to quickly make another one up, which is um, same idea, uh, so same measurements with the elastic on the inside like this so that it has more traction on the bride's leg and is less likely to slide down the leg. And finally, when you've gone to all the trouble of making something as beautiful as this for your very special friend or relation, make sure that you also make a beautiful box to put it in so that if, as you hope, your bride will keep it as a keepsake forever to remind her of that happy day, she has somewhere special to put it. And that's it. I'm going to quickly do another garter now, just at super speed, to show you a different design. Hello, right, I'm back from the past and I'm now in the present, so now I'm going to just quickly show you um, how I'm going to make the second garter. And I am going to rip through this pretty fast because I think I've dealt with every detail you could possibly imagine on the first video. Right, so here I have my elastic and here I have my lace and my ribbon. So don't forget the elastic goes smaller than the actual leg measurement and the lace goes bigger. So my leg measurement is 19 inches. So I'm going to cut it three inches less, which is 16 inches, which is here. You may want to make it even slightly shorter than that, but you can always cut it smaller, but you can't cut it longer. So that now measures 16 inches. So that's fine, that can go there. And the lace and the ribbon, I'm going to cut at one and a half times my leg measurement. Well, my leg measurement was 19. I'm actually going to round it up to 20 because one and a half times 20 is 30 and it's just so much easier. So I'm going to cut all of these at, whoops. Thirty inches. Honestly, this is just a, the amount of frill 
and that's frill not thrill, although it could be both, you get out of the garter. So um, it doesn't really matter if it's slightly more, you don't really want it to be slightly less, otherwise it's just going to look flat on the leg, you want it to look a little bit frilly. If that's your taste, you may want to do something different. With the lace, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put it edge to edge like this, sew it up and then place the ribbon on it so that it's more covering one than the other because I think it always looks better to have the top edge with just a little bit and the bigger part of the lace showing on the bottom edge. Um, with, uh, if, you put, if you make the top edge too high, it's going to flop and you don't want that either. Um, I'm only putting one piece of lace on the bottom here rather than two on the previous one because this bride is very petite and if I make the garter too big, it's going to overwhelm her leg and that's just not a good look. Right, so I'm going to, as before, sew all this up and then I'll come back and show you. Right, so here we have the lace and the satin ribbon all sewn up. You can see the back. I've just basically joined the two lace bits together and I've placed the ribbon more over one than the other. So it looks, so this is the top and this is the bottom. So to me, that looks very nicely balanced. And when it's crunched up, it'll look very pretty. Right, so the next thing we've got to do is find the halfway point, which we just do by folding it in half making a little mark or you can oops, so or you can just uh, do a pin and mark the quarter mark points as well obviously it's better to use a pencil rather than than um, pen I once picked up an indelible ink pen by mistake when I was altering a bridal gown oh my goodness that was a panic Right, now I'm going to mark this at the halfway and quarterway point. We are all pinned in place and when I pull it out, that's how I'm going to sew it, pulling it out as I go. Um, and then when it's sewn up, it will all ruche up quite nicely and then we can finish it off. Right, before I sew this up, you can see everything's attached now. This is my pin just holding the two ends together. I just want to measure it to make sure it's going to fit the leg. This comes to nine inches unsewn, so it'll be about eight and a half. But if I stretch it, it can stretch to 14. This is doubled, so that's 28 inches that can stretch to, but that's going to be pretty tight. So I think if it goes to nine and a half, which is here, that's not very tight at all, so I might actually make that slightly tighter, so make the seam here rather than here. But really it's a question of personal comfort um, for your bride. Always better to make it um, not loose, but less tight uh, to start with, because you can always make it tighter if she tries it on and says actually that's not comfortable. Particularly, bear in mind, if your bride is getting married in a hot country, we all swell up a little bit in the heat. So I'm just going to finish off this here and then overlock these edges and then we get to the fun bit, which is decorating, yay! Now we've got to my absolutely favourite part, just doing the final little bit of decoration. I've got these little um, bits of applique here, which are different layers. They've actually got a little bit of sparkle in them, so I didn't want to overload it with more diamante. The sparkle here is actually gold, and diamante is more of a sparkly white, so I think that would clash anyway. So it's got a little pearl and a lovely little rose. And I'm also going to put a little bit of ribbon on this like I did for the other one. This is also a very, very pale, delicate blue because the colors here are very delicate. And also, although they're not the same colors, they are the same depth of color, which is really important. So if, for example, if I put something like this next to it, it would completely overwhelm it. So you need to keep the, the depth of colors the same. And I just think this is so, so pretty. Um, so I'm going to cut these and sew them on, and then I'll show you what it looks like. And finally, here is garter number two. Um, you can see I did it slightly differently to the way I was initially intending, but that's the joy of it. You can just play with it as you go along. Um, these were the little applique um, rosebuds that I had to start with, and my initial thought was to put two like this, but then I remembered that actually this is my very petite bride, so I didn't want to do something that would overwhelm her legs. So I actually prized off this rosebud from this applique, um, leaving it naked like that 
and I've stuck the rosebud on here so it's much more compact and I use this um, ribbon to make a nice little bow behind and some tails and I'm just delighted with the result which I think is very very pretty and also suits the character of my second bride very well. Um, of course I haven't stuck this on yet but um, as with the previous one I've made a lovely box with a little memento message on the front um, for her to keep it hopefully um, and treasure it for years to come. So I will be doing other designs for garters but hopefully this has given you some ideas and um, help and inspired you to have a go yourself and explore your own imagination. I uh, hope you subscribe, uh, it's free <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.